In about three weeks, six astronauts and scientists and doctors will be isolated for an entire year in a project oh. called High Seas. It's, it's mission four of High Seas for an entire year. But together, right? Together. Okay. And one of them is with us right now. An astronaut. Doctor, <laughs> astronaut. Dr. Shana Gifford. A simulated astronaut. A, That's right. Freelance astronaut, she calls herself. I I, I don't this understand why. This is so Maybe. Is, like, special. I mean, does everybody do that? Oh, my God, an astronaut. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, okay. Right. Maybe, have, maybe you'll someday. be the first. Well, you know, when you're a little kid and they're like, well, what do you want to be? And usually it's a boy. It's like uh, saying a cowboy or an astronaut. Did you, as a child, ever have aspirations of being an astronaut? Oh, definitely. A lady astronaut. Absolutely. That's when Shane was 18 years old, she was in a class at Berkeley mm -hmm. um, called Mars by 2012. That's true. Oh, it sounds like a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it show it, it certainly demonstrates her aspirations to someday go to Mars. Do you think you will? Me personally, that's yeah. a really good question. I'm more concerned that we get there as a society. Uh, and then if I have the opportunity, maybe later on in my life, that would be a really neat thing to do. But yeah. Oh, yeah. first things first, let's how take close, the first step. How close would the simulation be? Now, now we, we mm. didn't really say right up front, but Shana is from St. Louis. She lives, I mean, she lives here in St. Louis. That's fantastic. So she is and, representing and us. she just got married a year ago. Less so let's ago. just get that out of the way. What's that going to do to your new marriage for you to be away for a year? Well, that's a really good question. <laughs> and I think yeah. I, you two have been married 41 years. Yeah, right. So maybe you can tell me, what's that first year really like? <laughs> yes. That's, well, we spent He's the time the uh, separated because he, I did a yeah, morning show and he did afternoon drive. Yeah. So it saved the marriage. It does. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I think your question's a really good one and people ask it all the time. And so I wrote it straight out of my blog, you know, the first question you should ask is, why Mars? Why are you doing this? Yeah, why Mars? Why Mars? So there's the, the greater societal question of why Mars, and then there's the personal question of why am I going to Mars? So yeah. why Mars? That's a great question. And a lot of people get really annoyed when you ask them that. You know, you could say, well, why skydiving? You mm -hmm. know, why, right. sure, pa yeah. why Picasso? Yeah. Why yeah. Uh, chocolate sprinkles on your Sunday? You know, mm -hmm. but it's not like that. It's not something you either get or you don't. It's not an aesthetic. It's a giant social endeavor. And I think, but I think it's an, one equivalent to saying, why healthcare? Why education? Yeah, right. Mm, um, yeah. And I think it's because this is, interestingly, the most human we can be. You know, humans are really fascinating. We celebrate the individual. We elevate people who are bold and courageous and intelligent. And at the same time, humans in the aggregate have value. We have value as a group, as a society. And space sort of epitomizes that. Mm -hmm. You say you take a brave, intelligent person and you say, go out there find things out for us make us and then come home to us and yes. that's when we all get better but, exactly, but is it more you know? let's go to mars or more let's get the hell off of this planet i think it's a little of everything <laughs> <laughs> the but grass is greener let's find out what, yeah. what else is out there the rocks so. are redder um i think it's a little bit of both yeah. um i think it's 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 the push but being explorers is who we are and what we do and how we become more and better humans. Yeah, you know, I can make a real rational argument for it. You know, do you enjoy closed cell phone, thermometers, temperature control, water purification? You know, all of that comes from the space program. I can make a rational oh, argument. Yes. I can I can yeah. pull the tech transfer argument or I can pull the argument from Mary Roach's packing to Mars, which is listen, we we feel like we have to go and so let's go play. Absolutely. That's an argument, but I don't think we, that's where you should stop. Okay. There are reasons to do it, but I don't think it's about reason. I think it's about being human. Well, it's it's the bigger picture. Sure. And and is it Mars because Mars is within reach more than the other planets or I'm Sure. Or closer to yeah. our type of environment sure yeah. and of course you know you've got a third gravity which is nice you have a nice solid rocky surface which is nice uh you <laughs> does have, wonders for the complexion yeah. you, you can <laughs> actually reach there in a human lifetime and return unlike these unlike these possible earth analogs that we're the finding round trip now. is about three years i Depend learned this from you. yes right. depending on the well, launch on when windows you leave. Yeah, on exactly. when you go. Yeah. now let me get back to that question though about the uh, simulation mm -hmm. and how accurate that will be now sure uh, i want to read from uh i believe this is from nasa the mission is to go to mars mm -hmm. grow food do science and don't kill each other and don't kill each other and really that is key to this particular oh, simulation are you the right? only woman in this no. no the commander is a female the okay. chief science officer is a female and the chief medical officer is a female well, don't scratch each other's eyes out. it's a sit <laughs> it's a three guys and three girls in space it's a sitcom yeah right it is <laughs> but how close sure. how a close will the simulation be well since we've yeah. never gone to mars we have no basis for comparison sure. yeah. uh, we can compare it to 
other previous Mars simulations. This will be the longest in history, so this is going to be a little longer. We can compare it to other space simulations. So most of the crew, in fact, almost all the crew has been on a space simulation before. I've been on a simulated trip to an asteroid, for example. The other crew members have been. That was Hera. Hera, yeah, yeah, down at Johnson Space Center. Mm -hmm. And the other crew people have been on Mars Desert Research Station simulations. It's going to be real in the sense that we are in the dome together with mission control 20 minutes away no other human visitations unless they walk up the walk up the volcano um <laughs> which is not impossible but a volcano in hawaii it's on it's actually at 8,000 feet on a volcano so you know there are humans in the area it's on the big island so there are people i would assume it's protected it is actually private property Oh, okay, well, there so. you go. Just put up a sign. No <laughs> trespassing. You're done. Mars in progress. Please yeah, right. do not pass. <laughs> exactly. Now, what it's is your specialty spot. in medicine? Well, for a blink of an eye, it was internal medicine. And I got it like, like most people. got it every day. went to the hospital. went to work. But it was not consistent with my life. I didn't really want to pursue that. I wanted mm -hmm. to pursue space medicine. So... I went to pursue that. You know, so basically the timeline of humanity has been converging on interplanetary travel and my personal timeline has been converging along space medicine. The two timelines kind of just intersected. It's like a female Neil deGrasse Tyson. This right really here. It's so interesting. Like well, I, why were you chosen for this mission? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, I was shortlisted for the previous mission is po probably the best answer to that. So high, uh, high Seas 3 ended in June. They all jumped back to Earth uh, from a plane. It was very dramatic Whoa. and fun. Wow. Yeah, the, with the Golden Knights from the Army. And I had applied for that mission after being advised to do it by a female crew member from the first mission, Dr. Sierra Strastre, who's very cool. I reached out to her to help tutor young women in Los Angeles as a positive female Latina role model. We try to get these girls from uh, Girls Today, Women Tomorrow to stay in school, go to college, study science. Well, really, what better role model than a real astronaut? Or right? you know, Dr. Sierra Sostra, <laughs> yeah. who's amazing and a scientist, and she had just come back. And she'd, she'd been on, on, on simulated Mars flying the Puerto Rican flag. And I thought, this is perfect. I got to get her to talk to these girls. So she did. She was very gracious and very helpful. And when, when she and I were just chatting, she said, well, you should apply. It would be, you'd have a lot of fun. Yeah. So I did, and I came that close. But instead of going on High Seas 3, I went to Hera 6. And as soon as I basically stepped out the door, I got back from the asteroid, I got the phone call, can you please come on High Seas 4? I said, sure, why not? I just got oh, back man, to Earth. What a call. Wait, hold on one second. And then I asked to my husband, so honey, <laughs> I know I just got back from that asteroid. Would you mind terribly? <laughs> <laughs> if I went to Mars for a year. And you know, he's he's been great about it. He started I mean, Fortunately, he is a scientist as well. He is. He's yeah, a neuroscientist so at Wash U. And he comes from a family his mother wanted to be an astronaut. Oh, and was that and something. was told women don't become astronauts. Was that a, was that a movie I married an astronaut? Yeah, really. It says so like you, meant to be almost. Do you remember then. do you remember the movie The Reluctant Astronaut? No. In that movie, <laughs> uh, uh, Leslie Nielsen played the role of Major, he was an astronaut, Major Gifford. <laughs> oh, really? You, you shared <laughs> that name with him. Right. Wow. A little piece of trivia for you there. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up. Ding, yeah, ding, really. ding, we have another winner. <laughs> <laughs> now you leave uh, August 28th. We, yeah, well, we, are, we are not leaving you all. We feel like you're coming with us, and we hope that you follow us that on the website. That was my next question. How do yeah. we do that? Is okay. a, there's a 20-minute delay, but it's a 20 minute delay. What, how do we follow you? So the High Seas website, H-I-C-E-A-S, -S, -E is great. My blog dot is... Org. Dot org. Dot org, you're yes. right. Yes, highseas.org. And then my blog is livefrommars.life. That's a great one. And, or shanagifford.com is my personal blog, but the mission blog that I'm doing is livefrommars.life. Uh, I Twitter at Humans Are Awesome. Okay. Uh, please send us tweets. Please come to highseas.org and talk to us there. Leave us requests. We, we're interested in outreach. We're interested in talking to school kids. We're interested in talking to anybody who wants it. That's great. If you go to YouTube and look up High Seas, you can see what the previous crews did. They have habitat tours through the Hab, and I think you'll, you'll put some of that We've up. looked at it through this, yes. That's great. Well, Dr. Gifford, thank you so much for coming here today and sharing this with us. Happy to be here. Thanks and, for having uh, me. Godspeed. Thank you. See you on Mars. Yay. And thanks to Clayton's Bakery and Deli and De Pair offering fresh baked goods using recipes from St. Louis's earliest history. Clayton's Bakery and Deli, 11,744 Manchester Road in De Pair. 